if you had to unfortunately be in that mess, you know how bad it was because the backup was intense. Just terrible, yeah. especially if you were sitting there in those early morning hours. Oh, yeah. It just was shut down. Yeah. And for drivers, this feels like another day, mm -hmm. another crash on I-64. Yeah, this is a problem that unfortunately they have seen in that area far too often. News Channel 3's Kimberly Kage, uh is outside that area right now, joining us from that scene of that crash. And Kimberly, I know you've been uh, looking into this problem as a whole today. Well, for drivers and first responders, it's an all too familiar scene, especially in this stretch of that construction zone. So I started asking about the number of crashes, how often they're happening, and why. Well, she looks great. Another crash in the construction zone of I-64 in Campbell County, meaning more hours of gridlock traffic on the interstate and along Route 60 in Campbell County. Monday's accident happened just before 6 a.m. when firefighters say a semi crashed in the eastbound lane of I-64 in Barbersville, going over the embankment and landing on the Merritt Creek entrance ramp below. No one was hurt, but on board the 18-wheeler, a 55-gallon drum of methanol and diesel fuel. Hazmat crews called out to clean up the mess. There are 10, um, 10 containers uh, that holds 270 gallons of motor oil in each one. So those have to be offloaded into new containers. Then will be loaded into another transportation truck. This latest crash leaving drivers yet again with lengthy delays for hours on end. So I asked Cabell County 911 how many crashes have been reported in this construction zone between mile marker 15, which is the 29th Street exit, to two miles past the Huntington Mall exit. WSAZ learned Monday, since January 1st, 2023, Cabell County 911 estimates there has been a total of 33 crashes in that construction zone. Nine of those involve tractor trailers. That's 33 crashes in 65 days, meaning on average, a crash happening in the construction zone every other day. 911 says it estimates each crash closes part of the interstate for hours, stranding drivers and making it nearly impossible for EMS to get to a scene quickly or respond to emergencies, leaving crews scrambling to help get traffic moving again. When these things happen, you know, and the interstate gets affected or even Route 60, the traffic congestion is unbelievable. Uh, we understand that and we do our very, very best to speed up whatever we can to get traffic going as fast as we can. You know, this case, this was all a safety precaution and I'd rather things shut down, people be safe than something happen and people get hurt. WSAZ previously asked the Department of Highways about helping with directing traffic in these situations. We were told they were always looking at possibilities to use flaggers or traffic directors in high congested areas to move traffic along. So today, I reached out to ask for an interview about safety concerns following the number of crashes and the hours of gridlock for drivers and first responders, but I didn't get any response.